Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, thank you so much for clicking this video and for stopping by. I hope you'll like what you see and you'll stick around and follow me on this pregnancy journey. I am currently 13 weeks and four days and super excited because I am officially out of the first trimester and things are getting a little better. <laughs> so if you are interested in seeing what my first trimester must-haves have been, go ahead and keep watching. So for those of you who are new to our channel, my husband Eric and I conceived this baby, our first baby, through IVF. And we are so thrilled, so excited. I mean, it's been four years of infertility uh, to get to this point. And so we are just so happy. And honestly, every single day, I'm so happy to be pregnant. But I have had some moments where I've just been like, wow, pregnancy is hard. It's harder than I thought. And um, when struggling with infertility, I remember th so many times thinking that like, I would do anything to be pregnant. I would do anything to have morning sickness, to be exhausted, to have all those pregnancy symptoms. Um, and while I still feel that way, I wouldn't change this for anything, no matter how sick or uncomfortable I am. Um, but I have had moments where it's been hard and moments where I'm just like over the toilet, like just crying basically because I'm just realizing like this is a lot but it's also the most incredible experience to be pregnant and to be like feeling all those symptoms and to be like growing a baby inside me like I'm just so so astonished <laughs> that we're at this point and I'm so grateful for it but yes it definitely has I have had those moments where I realized wow this is hard um so in this pregnancy must-haves or first trimester must-haves video, I'm going to show you some things that helped to make this first trimester a little bit easier. Okay, so the first thing on my list and something that's probably on everyone's first trimester must-haves is prenatal vitamins. So I've been on prenatal vitamins for as long as we've been trying to conceive, which is four years, and I've tried a few different ones. And for the most part, I prefer prenatal vitamins that are just one capsule a day. I have a hard time taking more than that just because I have other supplements I need to take and it's just like too much. So um, as long as it's one capsule a day, I'm good with it. The next thing I have down on my list is a water bottle. And when I first found out I was pregnant, I was so thirsty and I it's kind of tapered off as I've hit my second trimester, but I was so thirsty I could not get enough water and especially ice water, which was unusual for me because I prefer like lukewarm water, room temperature water previously, um, but I love ice water. So I got this water bottle at Eddie Bauer, the Eddie Bauer store of all places. Um, Eric just happened to have like a $10 gift card or something to there and so we were there and I saw it and I was like, hey, this looks nice because it has a straw and oh my goodness, this is the best water bottle I've ever had. So it's totally like a Yeti that'll keep your water super ice cold or super hot, whatever temperature you need it to be at. But the thing I love about it is the straw. Like I drink so much water because it has a straw. So this is the Stanley brand. I like really don't know much about this brand, but it's like the best. I don't, I like, I have other water bottles that have, um, stainless steel straws and while those are okay, um, I like this like hard plastic one. It just doesn't taste when you're first pregnant, you might have this me like metallic taste in your mouth and I had that. And so the metal straws were just not doing it for me. They made all my water taste really like metallic. So this like hard plastic straw was perfect. So I will sit and drink this at work. I work a desk job and I will sit there and drink this. I'll probably drink like four of these a day and I don't even know how many, I think it's like 20 ounces. Yeah. So it's like 80 ounces of water a day, which I think is well above what I'm like supposed to get. But I heard that when you are first pregnant, your body's producing like 
double the amount of blood that you usually have. And so that's why a lot of women get really thirsty. So a water bottle has been like top of my list, must have item. So one of the joys that comes with the first trimester of pregnancy is nausea, morning sickness. But for me, it was night sickness and um, not everyone gets it. Um, and not everyone gets it as severe as others, but either way, it's, if you have like this constant feeling of like queasiness, it's just uncomfortable and it kind of trips your mind out when you're queasy all the time for such a long, like consistent amount of time. So I started getting queasy about six weeks. It seemed like it was like the day before I turned, turned. Is that what you call it? Um, the day before I hit the six week mark. So it was just like this weird, like, am I hungry? Am I sick? And I, it's just a weird feeling. So then it started to progress. And by week seven, it was like, by the time I went to bed at night, I would, you know, about seven or eight, I would be so queasy. And I still have not thrown up to this point. I still have not thrown up, but I've had many moments where I'm just over the toilet and I'm just like wanting to throw up to provide some relief. But around seven weeks, um, I realized that if I just ate um, pretty frequently, then my nausea was so much better. And one of the things that I discovered around seven weeks that really made my nausea feel better um, was eating a cup of noodles. So <laughs> this darn spicy chicken flavor cup of noodles seriously was a game changer. And I hate that such an unhealthy thing made me feel so much better, but it did. And you know what? You really just have to go with what makes you feel better. I would eat this and it would like calm my stomach. So week seven to eight, I probably ate one of these a day. Um, whether it was for dinner, lunch. Um, yeah, so I mean, you really just have to be patient with your body and find what makes you feel better and only eat what you crave, only eat what um, sounds good to you, I guess. Um, I tried so hard to make things like salad and veggies and the normal like healthy things I was eating sound good, but you just don't want to push your body to, because when I would try to eat a salad or whatever, I would seriously get so queasy. So you really just have to do what sounds best and just get, be patient with your body. Um, by about nine weeks, I wasn't eating as much ramen and probably the last like two weeks, I think I've had one container of it. Um, when I felt pretty queasy the other day, I ate one and it, it's just weird how much it helps me feel better. It's so weird. Um, but anyway, so that was one food that really helped my nausea. Another thing that really helped <laughs> was saltine crackers. I know it's like so typical, but you know what? It helped a lot. And I went through like two boxes of, not this size, but like, so probably equal this size. This is a Costco version. Um, we were at Costco the other day and we're like, we might as well buy a bunch of these. Um, I would keep these by my bed, like so many people told me to keep these by my bed, and if I ever woke up in the middle of the night, I would eat like two or three of them, like I would just lay there and eat them, and seriously, it would settle my stomach so fast. So I started calling um, <laughs> salting crackers my medicine, and that's really what it was. It was like instantly, if eating, if, if I had nausea, I would eat a couple of the, those saltine crackers and I'd feel so much better. And anytime I'd complain to Eric, I'd like, be like, oh, I'm so queasy, I don't feel well. He's like, eat some crackers. And I'd be like, oh yeah. And it would help. So another thing I used um, when I felt nauseous were these preggy pops. And I know these are pretty popular. My friend was so nice. She um, actually sent me these in the mail. Um, she sent me a couple containers and she said they really helped her and they really have been helping me. So. This is all I have left. I've gone through like a big bag of them basically. Um, my favorite are the lemon flavored ones because they're sour. I don't like love the green apple, but I love 
the lemon and the orange probably the best. Um, they really did help. I don't even know what they have in them, to be honest. I just, like, took them. And, um, yeah, they, they help for, like, 30 minutes. Like, I would have those at my desk at work. And around, like, 2 o'clock, it seemed every day, that's when nausea would start to, like, come on. I never really got it in the morning. I was usually okay in the morning. Um, but, yeah, I'd be sitting at my desk, and then nausea would hit around mid-afternoon. So I would just start sucking on those, and I would feel like a lot better. I felt like it would work for about a 20 to 30 minute period and then I would have to eat another one. Um, but those were really good. So if you're struggling with, um, some, I would say mild to moderate like nausea, then try that. So I don't know how well, cause that's how mine, mine's been like moderate. I've had like a couple moments where it's felt like pretty bad, but I have a pretty high tolerance for nausea like even when I'm like I have the flu or whatever I like don't really throw up I will not like let myself throw up the only time I've really thrown up is when I've had food poisoning and it just like has to come out so um so yeah I really liked the preggy pops so those are something you guys could definitely check out so when I was about seven weeks um that's when nausea like I said started to get really bad and I would go to bed and I just like could not fall asleep. I'd feel so sick. I would just lay in bed crying. And then um, I had a lot of people tell me to try Unisom. And so I had Eric go grab some at the store. And honestly, that has been super helpful at night. Unisom's actually a sleep, a sleeping pill, I guess. So this is what I use. And, um, I didn't know that that's, it's actually like a sleeping pill, but it helps with nausea too, I guess. So this is 25 milligrams. I took half of one every night and then sometimes I would take a full one at night because I would wake up in the middle of the night feeling queasy. So like the next night I would remember that and take a full 25 milligram. Um, but the only thing is it does make you really sleepy. At least it did for me. It made me sleepy like when I woke up. It was always really hard for me to wake up, and that's usually not how I am. Like, I wake up really early, but since I've been on Unisom, I wake up, like, an hour or two later than when I normally would get up. Like, I normally get up between 5.30 and 6 to work out and do, like, my morning routine, um, but lately it's, like, I'm waking up at 7 or 8 um, and still struggling to get out of bed. So that's the trade-off, but I would rather have that and be able to get a good night's rest um, then be sick going to bed and then, you know, nauseous and waking up throughout the night. So Unisom definitely helped me. I know some people haven't been as lucky for it to work for them, but it definitely, definitely worked for me. And I'm so grateful for that because that was a big game changer. So since I discovered it around week seven, things have been a lot better. Okay. So another thing on my list is comfy clothes and I don't know if um, nat like natural pregnancies are this way, but with IVF pregnancy, you are very bloated in my experience. I've never been pregnant naturally, so I don't know, but I have been so bloated this first trimester, and I think a lot of it has to do with the medications I was on. So I was on progesterone and estrogen and stuff like that um, up until 10 weeks. And so I just felt super bloated, like more than I... I guess I just didn't think I would feel so bloated in the beginning. Um, so I really wanted to be comfortable and just, but also like look cute, I guess, you know, like I didn't want to be walking around in sweatpants and stuff. So I actually bit the bullet and I think, I don't know why I battled with this, but I just felt like. I'm only, what was it, like six or seven weeks pregnant, like I shouldn't, I shouldn't buy maternity clothes yet or whatever, but I don't know, I bit the bullet and about, I think about eight weeks, I got some maternity leggings that are so comfortable and this is what they are, they're from Gap, I've mentioned these in some of my pregnancy updates, I don't love them for like warmth and, because they're pretty thin and see-through. So you definitely need to wear like something 
to cover your booty if you're going to wear these out and about, in my opinion. Um, so they don't pass that squat test, let's just say that. Um, but gosh, like this belly band that goes over the belly is so comfortable. So it was such a relief um, wearing <laughs> like maternity pants and feeling so bloated. Um, I still feel a little bloated, but I do think like my bump is starting to push out a little bit. So it's a little bit um, different now. Um, but anyway, so then I got or my sister-in-law actually got these. I've talked about these um, from Ross, just these look denim maternity jeans, and they have this cuff leg. I really, really like having these. Um, I feel like I can dress these up or down and make them look super cute, but they are so comfortable. So I would hit up like Ross or Old Navy or Gap or whatever, and just buy something like really inexpensive to get started. Um, I'm glad I did that because then I can like dip my toes into maternity clothes and decide what I like. Okay, one of the most surprising things that's happened to me so far in this pregnancy is uh, the situation with my chest. So I have always been pretty small, a pretty small cup, a B if I was lucky. And then as I was going through IVF and I was on all those hormones, I started to change and increase in my cup size. So by the summer, I was like a D cup, which was crazy for me, like crazy. Um, but now that I'm pregnant, um, I like don't even know what to do with myself. My chest has grown so much. I think at this point I haven't been fitted again, but like, I'm sure if I was to go get fitted, I would probably be like double D or I don't, I don't know. It's just like so much going on, so much happening up there. Um, and I was super uncomfortable to be honest. So I was like busting out of all my bras. I finally decided, you know what? I'm gonna bite the bullet and get a maternity bra or like a nursing bra. So whether or not I decide to nurse, like I just wanted to have a comfortable nursing bra um and so I went to Target because I wanted to just try something kind of inexpensive first and I got this bra um it's like no wires um I can't, I'm not even sure what kind it's the Jill I don't even know how to pronounce this brand is it Gilligan and O'Malley wire free seamless nursing bra um, it's a medium and I think it fits pretty well. It's a little loose, but the cup size I think fits well. The small just like pushed everything too, <laughs> too close together. So this, um, was, is super comfy. I think it was like $16.99 or something. So it was great for me to get started. Um, I do wear it under some of my like day-to-day -day clothes, but more like it's not really a t-shirt bra. And so, um, I ended up going just to H&M and getting, um, a, a bigger size than what I had in like my Victoria's Secret bras that I was wearing before then, um, just because they were super inexpensive and I'm not sure how long I'm going to be able to fit in these bras. And so I didn't get nursing. I just got a couple cheap bras from H&M and they've seemed to be doing the trick for now. And I'm sure I'm going to have to buy more bras when I, you know, have my baby and like things continue to change. So, um, you definitely want to be comfortable when you're in your first trimester. I mean, throughout all pregnancy, I'm sure. Um, but I think in the first trimester, it's just so confusing. Like for me, it's been just so tricky. Like, what do I wear? How do I like, like, it's just such a battle. Like, do I buy nursing bras? Do I buy maternity pants? Even though I'm so, early on into my pregnancy and I think, you know what, who cares if just buy what feels comfortable and makes you feel, you know, more like yourself, cute and, you know, however you want to feel. If it's just comfy, then that's fine. But I wanted to feel, like I said, I wanted to feel comfy and I wanted to feel like put together and cute. So anyway, um, those are the things that have been helpful for me as far as clothing goes and comfort. The last thing on my list of first trimester must-haves is a pregnancy app. So I played around with quite a few of them, um, but the one I would say is the 
one I use the most is the Ovia app. And so I'm going to like put in like a little video of the Ovia app here and um, show you guys kind of what I like about it. Like I would say um, the main thing I like about it is where, where you can like add in your symptoms and track like how you're feeling. Um, I don't do it every day. I was really good in the beginning. Um, and in the past like couple weeks, I just haven't been as good as at doing it every day, but I like to track, um, how I'm feeling, what symptoms I'm having, um, amount of sleep I'm getting, exercise, what I'm eating, that sort of thing. Um, just to look back and, um, compare days or whatever, and just keep things tracked and you can track your weight and blood pressure and all that kind of stuff too. Another app I really like is the bump app and I'll put that right here as well. The bump app is great for, um, articles in my opinion. I think for like what you should be eating, what you shouldn't be eating, um, like what exercises you should be doing every day. You just get like three or four new articles and I like to read those when I have some time in the morning or at night. Um, it just answers a lot of my questions that I've had. Um, like I had a question the other day about like, Oh, when can you, when can I not sleep on my back anymore? And I just happened to have that article pop up in my bump app. So I really enjoyed the bump app for that reason, for the articles. And another thing that's really cool is you can click on, um, whatever week you're on and then it'll show you like 3d, um, pictures of what's happening with you and with the baby. So I really like that one. And then the last one that I really like is the what to expect when you're expecting app. Um, and this one's great cause it does a weekly video, like showing you what's going on with your baby and with your body. And, um, it's pretty quick. It's like a less than five minute video. And then, um, the other thing that I love about the what to expect app is I love the forums. I love, um, like, the questions people are asking or like how people are connecting like, Hey, when are you due? I'm due on the same day as you. And like, you just talk back and forth to people. And some people have questions about different things and it will help to answer questions that you're also having. I'm not really sure what app I like the most, but I don't think I have to choose because my phone has room enough for all three of them. So I like to look at all three of them. And, um, I don't know, let me know if you guys have been pregnant, if you've used any, any of those apps, which ones you like the most in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinion. All right. Those were my first trimester must haves. Um, if I didn't mention something that you guys think is a total must have, go ahead and write it in the comments below so that we can help each other. Um, especially those of us who are in their first trimester that are just wanting more resources for what can help you. Um, yeah, go, go ahead and put it in the comments below. I would love to hear what some of your guys' must-haves are. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll stick around, subscribe, hit the bell notifications so that you can be informed when I upload a new video. I don't have an upload schedule, so I kind of upload randomly. So if you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications turned on, then you will definitely not miss any videos. So thanks again for watching, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.